Hello everyone, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Well, last time we tried to build a space plane to go rescue the Kerbals we abandoned on Minmus, and it didn't end up particularly well. But I think I'd like to take at least one more crack at this. Now, we could obviously very much simplify the design. I could cut it right back and go down to the Mark II inline set. They're a lot smaller, a lot easier to manage. I've done space planes with those before. And we could certainly bring back all of the Kerbals we need to. Um, just need to put in a couple of passenger bays. We can land, take off. The downside is, well, a couple A wouldn't be able to bring the rover this time. Can probably like put the scanner arm on the space plane and just drive it around the surface. Then longer term, I'd like this to be able to drop off satellites into low carbon orbit. And so having that bit of extra space would be quite handy. Now, video did go live yesterday, so I did have a look at the comments. And main bit of feedback here, other than it looking ridiculous and looking like something from Star Wars, is that my centre of lift is a little bit too far forward. It's okay right now when it's overlapping, but by default, uh, KSP empties your fuel tanks from the back forward. And so as time goes on, we're going to start emptying the back tank. The centre of mass is going to start sliding forwards, especially as these tanks all start to empty. Can see that there and as those are starting to slide forward uh, the center of mass gets more and more unbalanced until it ends up flipping around like it did even as it's set up it's wanting to pitch nose up so i think i'm going to adjust it a little bit so that the the center of lift is a tad further back or the center of mass is a tad further forward just to generally give it a bit more control, I'm going to give it a proper tail instead of these very, very forward elevrons which we had. I'm going to give it proper uh, elevators on the back here. So will also pull the centre of mass a little further back so it's less likely to nose up in the early stages of flight. So it should give us quite a bit more your authority or pitch curve authority even. Without really changing too much about the design. It is now unfortunately just over the parts limit, so I'm just going to trim off some of the solar panels. Here I smack on the parts limit without needing to upgrade. Make sure it's empty so no one dies. Yeah, screw it. Let's test this thing. Okay. SAS on. Just into full and release brakes. Okay, approaching 100 meters per second. So attempt to rotate, rotate good. Right, gears up. Not sure why these aren't deselecting. Don't know what I've done wrong there. Alright, I'll just hide them all in the corner for now. The one I wanted up was the rapier engine, so I can keep track of its fuel throw and thrust. Yeah, so far this design seems a lot more sensible. The airflow is beginning to drop off, so I'm just going to lower the nose a little bit. F low is increasing and thrust is increasing. 
So space planes, that's generally what you want to keep an eye on is the uh, well, either the air fuel flow or the thrust. Ideally you want that steadily increasing for as long as you can while your speed and your altitude is increasing. Ultimately what we're aiming for is to get as much horizontal velocity as we can possibly manage before we then try and pitch up and break orbit. Because as long as we're air breathing, we are very, very efficient. We're only burning liquid fuel. We're taking in oxidizer in the form of oxygen with our intakes. But as you go higher, the pressure drops. But at the same time, as you go higher, resistance is dropping, so you can reach faster speeds. So as long as your speed is increasing, so that the actual amount of air coming in is steadily ticking up, you're normally going to be in a pretty good position. So you can see airflow is beginning to drop off again, so I'm just going to pitch down a tad. Airflow is back on its way up. We are still gaining altitude, we're still gaining speed, so all of that is looking good. This is going so much smoother last time. I think it was just the lack of a horizontal proper stabilizer. I don't think these little ones were cutting it. And I think the rest of these were too close to the centre of mass to really be doing a good job at pitch up, pitch down. Entering an ever so slight dive here just to pick up some horizontal velocity and I'll pick us back up again. Our thrust is nicely increasing. We re-entered an ever so slight climb. Starting to push through the sand barrier now, we're going to slight dive to pick up speed and thrust. Struggling to push through the sand barrier, I'm going to try another dive. Okay, so potentially need more just plain engines, could also potentially use more uh, air intakes. But right now we are breaking the sand barrier, we're pushing 200 kilonewtons of thrust per engine. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is really going to work as a single stage to all that. I th think we could use some more thrust on this thing and some more air intakes. I'll give it a go, we're going to see how far it can get and then I'll glide it back down afterwards. I'm thinking we'd improve it. It's to kind of go with what we've got here but have two of these, so just like we've got the two wings, we can build in these segments into two wings. So we've got the, uh, so that'll bring it up to a total of six rapier engines, a fair bit more fuel, but hopefully not too much more weight. Then obviously it will need rebalanced. I found fragments of the previous one in the distance. 10 kilometers and if it's starting to really bleed off the uh, thrust though. I think I will just have to accept that. I'm reaching the, <coughs> the limits of how fast this thing can go. On the bright side it has been a lot more stable than the previous version. We're reaching 15 kilometers. Pretty soon I'm going to change over. Bomb as I've forgotten which of the groups I assigned to toggle the engine control. So I may open my solar panels by mistake. There we go, enter the rocket mode. Oh, the rocket mode's a bit aggressive. I've actually lost control of it when entering rocket mode. I don't know why that happened. Uh, the SAS query isn't enough, I guess. Yeah, I don't think I've got strong enough SAS on this for space. I'm surprised the engine gimbling is not working. We've got to 17 uh, kilometers. Uh, we are now in a store. 
That's fine. I'm just going to try and splash land this into the sea and recover it. So I think what we need to do is, yeah, more engines give us more thrust on this version. Otherwise, this version is kind of working. I think we're just going to need some rather extensive and unfortunately rather expensive changes to it. Got it relatively stable just off the water. Just going to try and bleed off some speed. Actually, the air brakes are helping with aerodynamic stability. Trying to not hit the water, but be close enough that if this stores out, it's not going to fall very far. I think that was a perfect water landing. I don't think anything's damaged. Nice. Yeah, so we've got T10 back. It's lost 80 grand on fuel and things. That's not too bad. Decent enough test, but I do think it needs a lot of work. I am going to go for a simpler design. I'm going to try and do the mission, but with a much, much simpler design. Okay, so... I know I always said I was going to start off being simpler. This thing's almost as expensive, but it is a lot lighter. It does have a hell of a lot more delta v, uh, thrust to weight, rather. And this is the Falbert, the particularly huge aircraft for lightly bringing utility, should be utilities, through thrust. I do have a scanner arm in the little bay. So I can either retrofit that onto the rover that's already there, or perhaps stick it on this thing's nose and drive it around with an engineer afterwards. All of that's assuming that this can actually get into the air, which is a pretty big assumption. All of this counts as a lifting surface, so it should have enough lift. Put in a load of reaction wheels, so hopefully it has enough control there. And otherwise, it could probably use some speed brakes, actually. I'm going to put on a few more speed brakes. As before, not putting in any crew. But let's see what happens. Good, as I'm just going to put auto strut on the intakes, since they're flexing a bit too much for my liking. Otherwise, engine start. Okay, otherwise, starting to thrust up. Breaks off. Definitely feel this is a lot more thrust. Relatively smooth takeoff. Gears up. Awesome. Yeah, approaching the sound barrier. Yeah, airspeed and altitude are nicely climbing. Broken Mach 2. Entry and heating effect. Getting to lose the thrust. Speed is still increasing though, altitude is still increasing. Parts are overheating, so that's it. If you're down, I'm going to climb more aggressively now. Alright, going to change over. So I'm to cold cycle. I'm trying to escape the atmosphere at this point. Okay, that's looking good. Speed is steadily increasing, even at this angle of attack goes to the nuclear engine. Oxidizer burnout. Time to... Perhaps this is still increasing. 
Oh, I think we have got into space. Let's deploy communications and solar panels. Okay, solar panels aren't ideally positioned. About 200 delta V circularization burn. Okay, we are in orbit. So, single stage to orbit achieved. We do have 2000 delta V to play with, not a huge amount, but it's enough to do what we need to, and that is try and get to Minmus. Okay, left the Kenny 2 on the pole, so we'll see if we can get a nice little polar orbit. Yeah, there we go. It's, looks like a pretty good maneuver. Very long burn time, but I am just on two nuclear engines for what is actually quite a heavy craft. Probably more rocket fuel next time, even if it's a little bit slower, probably be useful. And again, this is very efficient. And just a small correction maneuver, tucks us in nicely close to the planet. This does definitely have sufficient reaction control. I just put a load of reaction control in the cargo bay. There we go. Okay, that's going to cost me about 200 to circularize. So that's only a one minute burn. That's Sentinel's managed to map one of the asteroids, so it is in its correct position. Now all we really need to do is wait until Minmus rotates about a bit, then this should have a pass where it's just about on top of the site, and then I can just deorbit, drop straight down. Got a thousand delta V to play with, so hopefully that's enough to land and get back up again. Eve rotates faster than I thought it did. We're also more perfectly on the pole than I thought we were. But no, it is turning around slowly. Right, okay. So there is a point of close approach and a point of fire approach. We were really near it. I'll just wait till next time round. Yeah, I've maneuvered it around so that in about three minutes we should be dropping more or less on top of the Kenny. Them to come down because I'm going to need them to actually land it. The SAS does seem to have some trouble with keeping the roll steady. Full brakes. These brakes are not strong enough. Alright, there we go. And now this thing's a rover. Oh, there we go. Park next to the Kenny. Chaftal can grab an EVA pack, I think. Not sure why it's not letting him grab it. Oh, because it's got that selected. I don't know how to unselect that. There we go. Oops. Bit of a bounce. There we go, that's all three rescued. I think there's an olivine formation just over that ridge, so I'm going to try and head there. You're at the olivine formation, now I just need to find my engineer and see if I can sort out the module. Uh, something somewhere exploded, but don't think it was me. There we go. Attach that thing to the front. Ease us closer. There we go. In range. Scan the olivine. I need more total electric charge to be able to do this. I need 100 more electric charge. Okay. Okay, it's not the end of the world. We do have batteries back one kilometre that way, so we'll just go and fetch them. And I know I could absolutely send a Kerbal out to go over there, grab it and come back. But I don't know if I need more than one, and I don't know how many, if any, a Kerbal can fit into a pack. Okay, something just impacted. Oh, it's probably the spaceship collapsing, actually. I think that's what exploded just now. Um, that's a bit weird. 
That just righted itself. I think I found what's hitting the ground. This thing's just periodically glitching out. Yeah, am I going crazy? There used to be a probe. Uh, a rover. It, it's not there anymore. Oh, I think Kerbal may have just done a Kerbal and destroyed the probe. The, the rover we needed, which had the batteries that we needed. Yeah, this thing has no batteries, no electrical power supply at all. Okay, so I think that part of the mission is a bust. There's no way that I can see to get electrical power without shipping something else over, which we may as well just send another mission out for. Uh, putting the probe back in the container so that we might be able to bring it back with us. There is fuel in that stage, which would be really useful, but I can't think of any way to actually get it over. We don't have any kind of docking equipment. We don't have any fuel connectors. Uh, otherwise, we could just drain that of fuel to put into this, which would really help. But can't do that. So let's get us back in and hope we don't all die horribly. OK, so we want to take off that way. So we'll manoeuvre a little bit and just take off and use that lot as a ramp. Then we just head retrograde and see if we can get back home and ideally get back home in one piece. All right, brakes off. Gently lift off, I don't want this tail strike. Oh shit. Speaking of tail strikes. That was a pretty bad one. Okay. Well, we'll just have to hope that we can glide this back. Okay, landing gear further backwards. Good note, good note. We got 42 kilometer intercept here. Plenty of fuel left over actually. Which is good because we're going to need everything that we can get. We have lost four rapiers. That is going to be a problem when it comes to landing. Bigger problem is we've lost this tail fin. So we're on our return course now. So we can do some EVA gibberish here. See if I can adjust a few things. There we go. Added one of the ailerons back to that side. And I actually have an idea how to fix the tail issue. Okay, unfortunately it's not letting me pick this bit up. Okay, cut the corner of the wing off so it's a little more symmetric. I was hoping that I could put the big one in the middle, use that as our tail fin, and use these ones that were the vertical stabilizers, horizontal stabilizers, but that's not quite going to work. Okay, so it's not perfect. It is still lopsided a little bit. Hopefully we can still make it back. There's only one way to find out. We mapped one of the comets that we needed to. Oh, I forgot to get any science data from the surface. That means I'm going to fail the other mission too. God damn it. Oh, this was a disaster. Right, well, let's see if I can salvage anything from this. Here's re-entry time. It'd be great if this thing was in any way aerodynamically stable on re-entry. I really needed more fuel to be able to do a proper braking burn. Well, we've lost the vast majority of our flight control surfaces. Our kerbals don't have parachutes on them. Damn it, <laughs> I was going to just try bailing out at this point. How much RCS do we have left? Hardly any. Okay, it's going to have to all be on reaction control on thrusters then. 
Okay, undeploy the brakes. Let's see if I can get this flipping over. So we're coming down ass first here. We don't want that. Or maybe we do. It might be the only way we're going to get back. Right, retrograde. Deploy brakes. Pass the yes, arm. Um, not how I intended landing this thing, but this may actually work. Definitely going to lose a lot of components, but I'm just hoping the actual crew survive. Yeah, okay, it's going to be a 36 meter per second landing. Okay, all engines destroyed. All intakes destroyed. <laughs> oh, Christ. But they survived. It was kind of a rescue mission. <laughs> Alright, let's recover that disastrous mission. So we got 50 grand back from it. <laughs> For the 200 grand spaceship. We did recover all three crewmen. Oh, we did get science data from the surface of Minmus. Oh, perfect. That may have just saved us. One of the Kerbals must have been carrying an EVA report or something. Oh no, it might have been the auto transmission of the uh, impact. That might count. Yeah, the surface seismometer readings, which may have been the various parts of the rover crashing back to Earth after whatever the hell happened to it. Okay, so that's left us with 150 grand. But we did save some Kerbals had some experience, we did make a single stage to orbit, uh, and it returned to Kerbin in more than one pieces. But anyway, I think that's going to do for today. I uh, hope you all enjoyed. I certainly did. It's a very odd one. Uh, if you did, do consider leaving a like, comment, subscribing, all really does help the channel. And otherwise, I hope to catch you in the next video. Until then, remember to be kind to yourself and everyone else. Cheers.